Dior. What is this? What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. We have yet again another product from Dior to review here on my channel. This is going to be an interesting one. This is Dior's newest 10 pan. That's right. 10 pan eyeshadow palette. This is a part of their 2023 spring collection, and this is going to be my review of the Dior Mitza Edition palette. I was very curious about this palette. I have a lot of thoughts about this palette. I'm going to be demystifying this palette, helping you figure out if this is maybe worth picking up. Is it just another pink palette or did Dior absolutely knock this out of the park? If you want to know more of my thoughts, then keep watching. And if this happens to be your first time here, then welcome, welcome. My name is Sophia and this is my channel that focuses on all things beauty and luxury. I review a lot of Dior products, a lot of the new releases, but I also love Chanel, Tom Ford, Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, all types of Sephora brands. So if you love luxury makeup and you love reviews, I like to say I spend my money so that you don't have to. And if you want to see some more from me, then you're in the right place, my friend. Hit that subscribe button to join our fam because we have so much fun on this channel. And you can also click the notification bell to hear about every time I upload a new video. I'll say it right now. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And I'm going to try and link everything that I mentioned in this video in that description box down below. I don't have a ton of information on all of the retailers that are going to be carrying this new spring Mitza collection, but I am going to be doing my best to give you guys updates, whether it is in the description box, in a pinned comment, and also on my Instagram. So if you guys want updates about new Dior releases, definitely number one, subscribe here to my YouTube channel and also follow me on my Instagram because that's where I give you guys all of my real-time updates about product launches, things that get restocked, things that go on sale, all that kind of stuff. So definitely head on over to Instagram and follow me over there as well. It's just Sophia Sees Beauty and I'll have that linked down below. Okay, party people, let's get into this review because I have so much to say about this palette. I am going to be doing tons of close-ups, daylight applications, swatches, and of course, comparisons because there's been a lot of pink palettes that have been released in the past couple of years. So I'm gonna help you guys figure out if this is any good. Now, we were given a lot of information about this release in general, where it's going to be carried. We do know this is basically going to be like the Dior spring collection. It's gonna be also kind of like a Lunar New Year collection. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in my final thoughts. But like I just said, I'm gonna try and put as much information as I can get in the description box down below in terms of like the price and where you can get this. There are actually many products that are gonna be launching as a part of this collection. In addition to the 10 pan palette, I'll put some images up here for you guys. I am seeing a Dior Skin Forever Perfect Cushion Foundation. I am seeing also a cushion powder. This is all in the leopard packaging, which we will talk about in a moment. There's also an eyeshadow quint. So in addition to this 10 pan palette, we have a quint. There are 10 lipsticks that come in a limited edition leopard box. They don't all look new. I'm seeing like Dior 999 and nude look and that kind of stuff in there. I'm also seeing a clear lip balm. I'm seeing a matching Dior Show mascara, three nail varnishes, and I think that is it. I think that is it, my friends. And before I get into the palette itself, I wanna talk a little bit about the woman, the muse that inspired this collection so that we have a little bit of background behind the packaging because all of the packaging in this collection is leopard print. And we've talked about this in my like, will I buy it style of videos that I do, which are called pass or yes. A lot of you told me you absolutely hate this packaging. You think it's tacky. Some people like leopard print, some people don't. As you can see by my cat who was just playing there in the background, I'm a cat lady. So I'm usually drawn to the leopard packaging, but I did want to give you a little bit of background about this. Now, Mitza Bricard, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, is the person that inspired this collection. This was Christian Dior's muse. That's kind of what she's known as and also a really influential person in Christian Dior's life. She was in charge of the millinery department, which apparently are hats. She was in charge of like the fancy hat department that was as a part of his atelier and he really went to her to add a level of like chicness and sophistication to all of his collections like she was the person that if he didn't know you know how does this look I need some feedback uh what do you think of this collection she would kind of come in and be like add this hat take this away and style it this way she was not only his muse but she was also an employee of his company she was known specifically for her fondness of a leopard prints she was known to just kind of walk into the atelier with her fancy hat just kind of draped in leopard print and black and she was she was a very fancy and chic woman she was kind of like that person that everybody just thought was so beautiful and so chic in fact instead of being referred to as Christian Dior's muse she was often referred to as his leopardess she inspired his 
11 collection, which featured a lot of leopard print. If you guys are familiar, they recently released that Miss Dior Minifiore collection that I reviewed for you all. And that quint is called Miss Dior 1947. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, she actually named the Miss Dior fragrance. So there's a lot of different parts of like the Christian Dior releases that we've seen that have kind of referenced this character. And in fact, Christian Dior was known to have said that Madame Ricard is one of the rare people for whom elegance is their sole reason for living. So that is the inspiration behind this collection. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background about like, why is it leopard print? I was confused myself. To me, it felt a little bit random, but that is kind of the inspiration behind the collection. And I would love to hear from you all in the comments down below if you feel like it makes sense to you. Now we're gonna get into some of the basic product details while I show you some daylight close-ups of this palette. Like I said, I haven't really seen anything like this from Dior. We've seen like their bigger holiday palettes that have a mixture of products, but I haven't seen any 10 pan eyeshadow palettes from them at least within the time that I've been shopping from Dior. I am seeing from the makeup news that this is gonna be retailing for 17,600 yen. And if I convert that into USD, that converts to about $128. So this is gonna be in like around the $125, $130 range. So it seems to be pretty much in line with what I would expect because a quint from Dior is about $60, $65 and this has 10 shadows. And it also has limited edition packaging, so it's kind of what I would expect to see. Also, this is made in France, just like all the other Dior eyeshadows, and it also has a six month shelf life, once again, just like the Dior Quints do. When I took a look at this palette, one of the first things that I noticed is that half of the palette is much lighter and brighter and has more shimmery finishes. And then something that I feel like is pretty unique from Dior is that on the other side of the palette, it's much darker, it's much deeper, and we actually have quite a few matte shades to play around with, which I don't really get that much in Dior shadows. Like they might have one matte shade, maybe two matte shades. I mean, you only get five shades in a palette, but typically I see a lot of soft satin shadows from Dior and you're very much encouraged to be kind of applying those all over the eye, doing a one and done, even popping them in the crease and they look really beautiful and airbrushed. So we have a pretty good balance in this palette of shimmers to mattes. I wanna show you guys some close-up day like swatches of all of these. First up with the lighter side. This looks like a typical Dior quint to me. You know, we have some pink shades. They're not super frosty. It's that really beautiful satin formula, that beautiful satin sheen. I will say the lightest shade or the one that is in the upper left-hand corner it does have a little bit of shimmer to it, so it's not a complete satin. I don't wanna go as far to say that it's like glittery, but it has a little bit of glitter in it. It's not chunky or anything like that. It's not like a fallout type of situation, but just compared to the other satins that are on this side of the palette, this upper shade does have a little bit of glitter. And then let me show you the darker side of the palette, as you guys can see here. This is very pigmented. I was pretty surprised because for a lot of luxury brands, we don't get super pigmented mattes like this. I'm not really used to seeing this from Dior. Maybe it's just because we have a lot of pigmented mattes in this palette, like I said, as opposed to one. I was pretty impressed with the pigmentation here. And you guys are gonna see in the demos in just a second how those apply to the eye. But yeah, we have a pretty good balance of shades here. We have the classic lighter Dior satins, and then we have that mixed in with those deeper, more vibrant mattes. All right, friends, now that we have that out of the way, we are going to get into the product demo. Now, if you are new here, my style of look, my style of demos is usually something that I think is pretty wearable, something that I think you can do at home that I think the average Dior customer would like to do and like how they would use this palette. Typically, I will start off with a softer look, something that you can do really quickly, wear during the day, maybe wear to work, wear to running errands, like a soft day look. And then the second look that I'm gonna do is something that's a little bit more glam. We're gonna play around with the deeper mattes here, see if we can build them up, create something, you know, a little bit deeper, maybe for going out at night with a little bit more intrigue. And I will say, friends, there's no shade descriptions on here, so I'm gonna do my best in the visuals to show you which shades I am dipping into because none of the shades have a name. Side note, if you're wondering what is on my lips today and what is on my lips in the demos, it's these new Dior Lip Maximizers that I reviewed for you all. So I'll link that review down below in case you are interested. And I'm also gonna be putting the name of the shade that I'm wearing today 
in that description box down below. I know I'm gonna get questions about it because they're so beautiful, so I thought I would mention that. But on to the first look, which is the soft look. First, I started off with one of the matte shades. I picked the one that was the most neutral, the reddish brown matte, and boy, I was surprised at how pigmented this was. You need to use a very, very light hand. You probably will notice in the look that I'm wearing today, it's equally very soft, and I think after this first application, I kind of learned my lesson on how to work with these mattes. I think as long as you use a nice fluffy brush, you're totally fine, but I just want to mention this, especially if you have a deeper skin tone and you find like you don't maybe get enough pigment from Dior shadows, I want to reassure you that these are pigmented, and even though I put a little bit too much in the beginning, it was pretty easy to blend out and fix. I just had to kind of buff it into the skin a little bit, but I really do like this shade. It's a beautiful reddish brown. Next up, I dipped into some of the satin shades that are on the lighter side of the palette. I started to create kind of almost a little ombre, watercolor kind of effect. I wanted this to be very soft and bright, and I felt like these satin shadows, they went on just like any Dior shadow. They were very easy to apply. They don't have a super high high foily, high shine finish that you're gonna get from like, I don't know, Natasha Denona, Charlotte Tilbury, etc. You guys will see in the comparisons later. Like these are that classic Dior satin formula. And I think that the, you know, the peachy and the pinky and the champagne shades, they look really beautiful. They look very wearable. I didn't have any issue applying these at all. I also applied these lighter satin shades to the lower lash line. Once again, the Dior shadows are so smooth. It's always super gentle along my lower lash line. I also dipped into the white center shade, which is perfect for an inner corner highlight. I could wear this all over the eye. Like a lot of these shades are great for one and done kind of looks, just like most of the Dior satin shadows, but I really like the inclusion of that white shade for kind of like a pop in the inner corner. And then finally, I went in with that shimmery, like I said, almost glittery shade in the center of the lid just to add a little bit of a pop. I would be careful with this shade just because if you're someone that doesn't like a glittery effect, I don't think I would go into this shade as like my one and done look, but I think it looks really, really good as a topper or just in the center of the lid. That is personally how I like to use it. And then I also wanted to test out if this palette could also be used for blush and highlighter because if you're new here, I like multi-purpose products. I'm always taking my blush palettes, using them on my eyes, my eyeshadow palettes, and using them on my face. Like if this is $125, it better look good on the cheeks. And so so I wanted to try for science and for you guys if this looks good on the cheek. So I dipped into one of the beautiful bright pink shades and I thought it looked good. I was a little afraid that this was going to look maybe a bit too icy or shimmery, like maybe it would emphasize texture. But this is actually the same blush that I am wearing or the same eyeshadow, I guess, that I'm wearing on my cheeks today. And I think it looks beautiful. I love it. You can actually mix the satin shades with the matte shades as well and pop that onto the cheek. What I will say is because these shadows are rather pigmented, especially the matte ones, my tip for you is to dip in and then just tap the excess onto like the back of your hand. Dip in, maybe mix the color you want, tap it onto your hand, and then go in, that's the best way to apply it. It looks absolutely beautiful. And then I also went into one of the lighter satin shades with a highlighter brush, and I applied that as highlighter. And once again, I thought it looked very, very beautiful. It does depend on your skin tone. I think that you kind of have a good choice of tones depending on what kind of skin tone you have. And then this is the final look. This is the softer look that I created. Comment down and let me know what you think of this. I think that it came out beautifully. I think in the beginning it started off a little rough because I went in with too much of that matte shade, but I thought this was a really beautiful, soft, wearable look. Okay, friends, like I said, look number two is going to be a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more of a glam look. We're going to test out these mattes and see if they can layer up to build a little bit of depth. So I started off actually going in with a satin. I just kind of wanted to build a good base and I picked this one that is on the darker side of the palette. It's like a beautiful coral and I just applied that all over the lid. Then I started layering the matte shades and I really wanted to make sure that I was using some of the deeper ones that I hadn't used in the softer look. I felt like these built up very, very nicely. I was swatching these alongside a lot of other Dior mattes and I felt like 
the texture and the quality was exactly the same. The amount of product that comes off on your finger when you swatch it, the amount of product that comes off onto the brush and everything. These are pretty pigmented, but I feel like the texture and the blendability are exactly like any other Dior eyeshadow. I thought that they layered on top of each other very well. This color story, it's kind of hard to mess up because you have all of these shadows in similar tones. You don't have juxtaposing colors. So if you wanna just keep layering these on top of each other, you absolutely can. I also dipped into the deepest color there in the corner with a pencil brush and I really just tried to deepen up like that outer V. I wanted to see if I could create a little bit more drama. I also went into some of the lighter satins to create a little bit more like illumination in the inner corner and also on the center of the lid. For the glam look as well, I went in with some of the deeper blushes to see if once again we could use this on our face. So I went in with one of the deeper colors. Just like I said before, a little bit goes a long way, but I think that this looks so stunning. I really love that kind of monochromatic type of look with the blush. And once again, like I went in with a different satin color and used that as a highlighter, and I think it looked gorgeous. And finally, I did a chocolate brown winged eyeliner, added some mascara, and this is the final look. So this is a little bit more of a dramatic look. It's not too crazy. Again, it's something wearable. It's something that I think a lot of people can create with this palette. Comment down below, let me know. Do you like this look? Which look do you prefer? How do you foresee yourself using this palette? I would love to know all of your thoughts in the comments. I hope that those swatches and those demos were helpful. Now I'm gonna be getting into the product comparisons. This is the part of the video where I help you figure out, do you just have something similar within your collection? Is this something that you really need to pick up? I like to try and be helpful in my reviews so that we don't create a lot of waste and buy things that we don't need. And so I have a lot of Dior Quince here to compare for you. And then I have some other pinky palettes from other brands that we are going to compare. So let's dive in. And to kick us off and to kind of get it out of the way, I of course need to do a comparison with the Mitza Quint that is a part of the core eyeshadow line from Dior. They do have a Quint that is called Mitza already. And you guys are gonna see right here in the side by side, these are not similar at all. In fact, the Mitza Quint is kind of what I would expect from like a leopard themed collection. It's a little bit more neutral, it's deeper. It has like those burnished brown, red, plummy types of colors. So I would love to know from you guys, is that kind of what you were expecting from this palette? Cause that is definitely what I was expecting from this palette. But just to kind of get it out of the way, I do want to show you that the Meets a Quint, not similar at all to the 10 pan Meets a Edition palette. Next up, we have one of the limited edition Velvet Quints that launched earlier this year. This is Rosa Mutabilis. And I would say this one out of all my Dior palettes is probably the one that has the most similar color story. It's certainly not dupable, but the tones are pretty much the same. I think that in the Mitsa palette, just because you have more shades, you do have deeper shades and you have some more nude tones in there as well. Whereas Rosa Mutabilis is definitely squarely a very rose and pinky palette. Next up, we have another recent release from Dior that I reviewed for you all. This is the Miss Dior 1947 Quint. You can still get this Quint on the Dior website. And I definitely think that these are different enough. If you see the side by side here, the Miss Dior 1947 Quint, it has some pinky tones but it's definitely more purple and mauve leaning. Next up, we have the pink Corolle. Sorry, I know I always pronounce that so, so poorly. Pink Corolle. And this is the same story as the Miss Dior 1947. It's not as pink. It's definitely more purple toned. When I looked at this Mitsa Edition palette, I instantly thought that this lighter half of the palette looked like the Popolin Quint that launched last spring. So this was a limited edition quint that unfortunately you can't get anymore, but I thought that they looked pretty similar. I think that they have similar vibes, but when you take a look at the swatches, Popolin is more of like a bubblegum pink. And you can see also in those daylight swatches that the satin shadows from Popolin, they definitely have more of a sheen to them. Like, I don't know why. I think it just depends on the Dior quint, but the Popolin Quint has a little bit more of a sheen, whereas these ones in the Mitsa edition, they're a little bit more subdued. And then the last Dior palette comparison I have is with Rouge Trafalgar. You might think that these don't look that similar at all, but I think the top half, those top three shades in the Rouge Trafalgar palette are actually pretty similar. I'll show you guys some swatches here. But you know, I think the overall vibe of Rouge Trafalgar is pretty different from this Mitsa edition because this is just so, it's very much a pink palette. When I think of pink palette, I think of Miss Charlotte Tilbury. So I am going to do some comparisons with the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk collection. The first one and probably the most similar palette is the Charlotte Tilbury 
12 pan pillow talk collection. I love these 12 pan palettes from Charlotte Tilbury. Overall, I think the biggest difference here, friends, is that with Charlotte Tilbury, you get more browns, like you get more nudie tones as opposed to it being very squarely pink. Pillow talk is a nudie pink shade. I say this all the time. And so you, you do in the 12 pan palette at least get some pink shades and I'll show you guys in the swatches. There's a lot of dupable shades specifically with the shimmers in this palette. I think that this is a better palette if you were hoping for more like neutral transition shades in the one from Dior and in general you also get a more foiled effect from the Charlotte Tilbury shadow formula. Next I want to show you some comparisons with the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk quad and then also the Pillow Talk Dreams quad. That one came out earlier this year. I think like once again go for these if you want more of a nude tone. Like these aren't necessarily pink palettes. They're nudie pink palettes. If you take a look at the Pillow Talk Dream swatches, I think there's more similarities with Pillow Talk Dreams. I'll show you some comparisons with the regular Pillow Talk palette and it's not, it's not so much similar. I would say out of all the Charlotte Tilbury palettes that I have, the 12 pan palette is the one that has the most similarities with this one from Dior. I always get questions about the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions Volume 2, so I wanted to show you guys a side-by-side -side of that as well. I actually think that this Patrick Ta palette is more similar to the Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk kinds of tones than it is to this one from Dior, mostly because it's just not really all that pink. It's a little bit more of like a pinky nude and also the shimmers that are in that Patrick Ta palette are very glittery like completely different formula from this one from Dior and I just I think it's for a very different customer and a different kind of look. Next I have a comparison with Divine Rose, Divine Rose 1 from Miss Pat McGrath. These do not really have that many similarities. Divine Rose 1 is very muted but I will show you a comparison with Divine Rose 2 which has some more similarities because it is brighter. I actually thought that that these would be a little bit more similar and maybe it's because Divine Rose 2 has like that one really bright pink shade like the ones that you see in the Mitsa edition but when you swatch them like they're really not all that similar. And then finally I have one side by side up against the Guerlain Majestic Rose and you know Majestic Rose you don't really get that beautiful plum color and that soft brown in the Dior Mitsa edition so I also think that this palette is very much different enough and like when I create looks with the one from Dior they just come out way more pink whereas the looks that I create with the Guerlain palette they are a little bit like softer and and more neutral. Okay friends the time has come for my final thoughts and I like to break this down in a very formulaic way. I'm going to share my thoughts on the packaging, I'm going to share my thoughts on the formula, the color story, and then I'm going to kind of sum up my overall opinion of this palette. Let's start off with the packaging. The packaging, it's okay. It's not the best, it's not my favorite, and it's not because it's leopard print. I actually like the leopard print. I like the pattern on here. I think what I don't really like about this packaging is two things. Number one, I kind of feel like the colors are a bit washed out. You know when you get like a fake designer item, you know you spot a fake, maybe they're being sold on the side of the street or something like that and you can tell that that bag or that item is fake because like there's just something off about it. Like the colors are a little bit washed out. That's kind of how I felt about this like fabric upholstered palette. <laughs> like the colors are just a little bit dull that it doesn't really give the full effect of what I want. It almost looks like it's a fake counterfeit palette because of that to me. That is just my personal impression. I've kind of gotten over it, but I have to be honest with you, friends. Like, that was my first impression when I opened up the palette. It's absolutely not counterfeit, by the way, but, like, that was my first impression. And I think the reason that it's a little bit dull is actually because of something that's a bit of a pro, which is this fabric is very stain resistant. Like, I have touched this with you know, my grimy foundation covered hands when I'm doing my makeup and all of that. And it doesn't stain. I feel like this would wipe clean very well. It has a coated texture to it. And so I think that that's great. So if you're putting it in like your makeup bag or something like that, I don't think it's going to get as dirty. But nonetheless, I like to present all the facts and all my opinions to you. The other thing is that I just think that the pan sizes are a little bit too big. You probably saw in the side-by-side -side comparisons that I did in the last section of this video. Like these pans, they're so much bigger than the Dior Quint. You get a lot more product here. And I don't know if maybe I'm just not 
used to pan sizes this big from Dior. You know, I'm used to using like those cute little quince, but I almost feel like these pan sizes are comically large. Like they're larger than they need to be. And I feel like this palette could have been a little bit smaller and more compact. And I think that it would have felt more luxurious. I know that sounds so weird. Like if it was smaller and had less product, it would feel more luxurious. I think that it, I would have enjoyed this better if it were smaller. And of course, if it had, you know, like a lower price, maybe like a $90 price point. These are just my personal preferences, friends. The quality of the component is exactly the same as any other Dior Quint. I like that they went the extra mile with the fabric and with this print, but something within me just feels like these pan sizes are a little bit unnecessarily large. Comment down below if you feel the same. Now let's talk about the formula. I think that the formula pretty much stacks up with other Dior quints. I think that it is very similar if you guys use Dior shadows. I think you're going to have a pretty similar experience to this. These shadows, the shimmers or the, the satins, I should say, they don't have a super foily finish. So if you like the poplin quint, if you like the soft cashmere quint, I find that those, they have a little bit more of a metallic sheen, whereas some of the other quints are a little bit more subdued. I think that the shimmers in this palette are a little more subdued. What's nice though, is that you can go in with these brighter colors that have a little bit more shine. I'll kind of just show you there on my finger. These really brighten up the look. So I like the inclusion of that. I also enjoy the inclusion of this like slightly sparkly shade so that you can use that as a topper. I think that I would have appreciated maybe these center shades to be that true like topper formula. Like for example, which you get in the Miss Dior 1947 palette. Dior every once in a while, like they have a little topper shade in there that has a very sheer base that just adds like a nice little bit of sparkle. And I think if you add 10 shades to work with, it would have been nice to add some different finishes. And so it's like, you know, we really only get two, I guess you could say three because this shade is a little bit sparkly, three finishes in this palette. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more variation. If it's a five pan palette, I totally get it. You only get five shades to play with, but here we have 10. So that was like a little bit of a disappointment. And maybe I'm being a little bit unfair here, but that's just my personal preference. I would have liked to have seen these two little center shades to be beautiful, shimmery, elegant toppers. And then maybe just like a little bit more differentiation between the shimmers and the mattes. The last thing that I like about the formula is that I like that you can use it as blush and highlighter and I think it looks really beautiful. No matter what skin tone you are, I think that you can find something beautiful here. I think today I went in with this shade and I mixed it with this shade right here. So I mixed a satin and the matte and I think it looks gorgeous. I kind of put it all along the cheekbone, a little bit here, a little bit across the nose. And I have these shades in the crease as well. And I think it creates such a beautiful like monochromatic look. I love the fact that it's more multi-purpose. I think you get more bang for your buck. And if you're somebody that likes a more monochromatic look, or if you just love wearing kinky shades on your cheeks, then I think you're gonna get a lot of use out of it. Now let's talk about the color story. I think that there's two things that I like about this color story. The first one, I think that these shades are pretty. I think that these shades are gonna look good on a lot of different types of people. I think that a lot of people, you know, they like pink eyeshadow. They like neutrals and mixes of pinks. I think the biggest thing that I like about this color story is that it's gonna work for a lot of skin tones. Like you really can deepen up these mattes. You have the bright shimmers. I think it's gonna work for so many different types of people. And so I'm, I'm a little bit confused like why they're not telling us that this is gonna be more widely available because I do think that this will be popular and work in a lot of different markets. We don't always see this from Dior and you know, they were given the 10 shades and they, I think they made like fairly good use of the 10 shades. That being said, I think most of us will agree like this color story isn't groundbreaking. Even Dior has launched a lot of pink palettes within the past year. More on that in a little bit. When I use this palette, most of my looks come out pretty pink. You need to enjoy the color pink and how that looks to enjoy this palette. Now, the way I would look at it is like, if you want something more neutral, you have to use these shades that are on the outer ends of the palette. And that is what I did with my look today. I wanted to know, can I create a beautiful soft look that's a little bit more like similar to Charlotte Tilbury that doesn't come across super pink. And I do think I was able to achieve that. I do. 
But one of the things that I would like to see from this palette, even though I do like the deeper mattes, is I would have liked to have seen a softer mid-tone transition shade because all of these mattes, they're pretty deep. Like they pack a punch. I think I would have liked to have seen a color similar to this one in the corner, which is the most like neutral matte that is in this palette that was just a little bit lighter. So we had more of a gradient of tones because you have really white, you know, shimmer shade here. You have these mid-tone satin shades, but then all of the mattes are like super bright and super deep. Like where's the middle ground? And so for me, I have to go in with a light hand with the mattes, which I'm kind of okay with. Like I'm used to it. I have nice brushes that I like to use, etc. I don't know if the average consumer, depending on their skin tone, is going to want to do that. So that's something that I want to call out. So to sum up all of my thoughts, in conclusion, I think that this is a nice palette. I don't think it's bad quality or anything. I just kind of sit here scratching my head thinking like, who is this for? Like, wh why was this necessary? Because Dior has launched so many pink palettes lately. And also, I think more importantly, as a part of this collection, we're getting an eyeshadow quint. So like, why launch this and the eyeshadow quint? Are you testing us, Dior? Are you testing us to see which one are we going to pick up? Maybe they wanna test out this 10 pan format because they're running out of ideas or they wanna see, you know, can we pick these wearable shades that a lot of people like and sell really well and put them in a different format? Like, will people buy more eyeshadow? I think that a lot of these brands they're struggling a little bit to figure out what's going to sell. I think a lot of people have kind of pulled back and are buying less now. And that is why we are seeing these very like neutral and pink color stories. Because as much as I can criticize Dior for launching another pink palette, it seems like that is what is selling because they keep coming out with like very neutral, very pink palettes. I think that they're just going off of the data that they have. That is what is selling well. And that's probably why they came out with this color story. But I think for me, I'm just scratching my head a little bit. The other thing that I would love to know and some of you are going to have to let me know in the comments. Like, if you celebrate Lunar New Year, is this relevant? Like, does this stack up? Because all of the other Lunar New Year collections that I've seen, they have more of, like, the traditional colors, like the reds and the golds, you know, maybe more like a, a neutral color story. I don't necessarily see Lunar New Year from this. And maybe... I don't know, maybe this isn't supposed to be a Lunar New Year collection. Maybe it's just kind of capitalizing on the fact that we have another holiday coming up. But I would love to know from those of you who celebrate Lunar New Year, is this something that you think you would give to a friend, a family member, a loved one as a gift? Is this something you would pick up to kind of celebrate Lunar New Year? Does this scream Lunar New Year to you? Because to me, it really didn't. To be honest with you, I think a lot of us would be more interested in this palette and it would be more relevant for the occasion if it were a neutral palette. Like this doesn't even scream leopard print to me. I, if I saw this palette, I would expect to see a beautiful gold and brown and black and shimmery champagne kind of color story. I actually think I would have liked that a little bit better. I would have been like, wow, my perfect like holy grail Christian Dior neutral eyeshadow palette. It's almost like having two quints in one. And honestly, if they were to come out with that, I probably would buy it because I love Dior makeup. I love Dior eyeshadows and I do like this formula, but I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like we didn't need this. I know it's for spring and that's probably what they're doing. And the pink Sakura and the poppling quints, they just flew off the shelves. So they're, st they're being a little bit safe here. But honestly, I think that this collection and like the inspiration and with like the leopard print and just in general, I think we would have been more excited about this if it was a neutral palette. I also think we would have been more excited if we had maybe like some other colors that have been trending right now, like the soft greens and khakis. I think that that would have been beautiful. Do like a neutral palette with golds, browns, maybe a black and mix in some of those like neutral khaki and green tones. I think that that would be better. I don't know, but that's just me. Maybe this will fly off the shelves. So those are my thoughts, friends. I like this palette. I'm intrigued to see more. I wanna see more. Once again, if they launch more color stories, I'm definitely, it's gonna turn my head. I'm definitely gonna take a look because I like larger eyeshadow palettes. I like small palettes. I like larger palettes and I like the Christian Dior formula, but I don't wanna push anybody to get this palette because I think a lot of you, especially those of you that love beauty and have a lot of eyeshadow, you probably already have these colors in your collection. And hopefully this video has just been able to show all of us that in this type of format, 
the quality still stacks up. It's still a good palette, but I don't think that this is going to be for everyone. And I'm really curious what the Christian Dior lovers, the big Christian Dior beauty fans out there like myself, I'm really curious to see what they are going to think of it. And so with that, friends, I want to know your thoughts. Sound off in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of this palette. Is this something that you are going to be seeking out? Once again, I'm going to try and put launch details in that description box and keep you updated on where this is going to be available. And let me know like what what do you want to see from Dior Beauty? What what do you want from them this year? I know a lot of you are going to be going on low buys and being very critical about what you buy. What do you think would make you pull the trigger? I would love to hear all of your thoughts in those comments. If you like this video, please, please give your girl a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, friends, I hope that you are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.